Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for part five of the Monday Q and A. Finally, we're at the end. Let's do it. Is the drug culture different here than in the U.S.? By drug culture, I'm going to assume performance-enhancing drugs. You know, in all honesty, it's a good question because in the U.S., most of them are a felony to possess, whereas in the U.K., they're perfectly legal to possess. And oftentimes, the police, depending on what types you have, if they confiscate them, they have to return them or replace them because they're not allowed to keep them. And if they try to keep them, your lawyer can write a letter and get all your drugs back because they're not supposed to keep them. They're supposed to give them back to you. So you would think that in a lot of ways the culture would be different, but the truth is it's not that different other than the percentage of use is a little higher here. I wouldn't say it's dramatically higher because you can walk into any gym, any commercial gym, or any high school football locker room in the U.S. and there will be half a dozen guys on drugs. That simple. It's like that everywhere in the U.S. Over here is pretty much the same, although you see a little more stupidity with the level of abuse of some of the younger guys. Doing really stupid, reckless stuff because there's so much uh, underground life stuff so cheap. A lot of them mega dose oral cycles and then go binge drinking, which is just moronic. As far as the enhanced guys go, when they're, everyone's talking with each other, the level of admission is slightly different here versus in the U.S. Now, the public is the same because you still have supplement companies sponsoring it. You have public opinion in the public eye. Everyone other than just a few people who are willing to talk about it over here, oh, they're natural, they're natural, even when they're clearly using tons of gear. We see tons of models or even fitness models over here who we know use shitloads of gear who still in the public eye, they claim natural. And we know they're not natural, but they're sponsored by supplement companies. They, they have an image to maintain. And so they claim that line just like they do in the U.S. It's just that over here, they don't have a fear of getting arrested and going to jail like they do in the U.S. for it, but they could lose money. And what you'll find here is that untested events and everyone's chatting, just like in the U.S., everyone's pretty open with each other about what they use. However, tested athletes over here are slightly more open when it's not electronic communication, when you're sitting down one-on-one -on -one chatting with them and no one else is around. Over here, they'll open up to you a little more and, and discuss it with you of what they really do and how they get around their drug test. They won't always talk about how they get around their drug test so much as they'll admit what they use just when this guy's chatting if they know that you are also a user of, of anabolics or whatever. In the U.S., they generally won't talk to you about it unless they know that you're a dealer, someone who can help them get better at improving their drug testing, or you are on their team. In which case, they'll go ahead and open up to you in the U.S. And that's the biggest difference there is, is the tested guys over here are a little more open with other people who use only, whereas in the U.S. they're only open to them if there's a benefit to being open to them. Just my personal experience, I could be off there, but that's been my personal experience. And then obviously the, the, the younger guys here, because there is so much of it freely available, they sometimes abuse in really stupid ways. It's at some point may risk getting the law changed because their level of, of abuse is just borderline mentally handicapped. Actually, I don't even know if it's borderline. All right, next question. Jason, how did going bald affect your life with women, self, image, etc., etc.? Well, I didn't actually go bald. <laughs> I, I actually shave my head every single day. <laughs> I do have some thinning hair, but I think there's been videos in the past where I did where it grew out enough that you could see it a little bit. I choose to shave it because, one, I like the look. Number two, I hate, I've hated my entire life messing with my hair. Just, I don't like styling my hair. Styling products because I have psoriasis tend to irritate my scalp. They make my psoriasis worse and I find my psoriasis so much easier to control on my scalp if I just have my head shaved and get sunlight and I'm not having to put styling products and stuff in it. So it, it makes that part of my life a lot easier and I just like the look overall and I just have always hated having to deal with and style my hair and this just solves all the problems. 
So no, I'm not actually bald. I wish I was. It would save me a lot of effort. I spend probably 10 minutes every single day rerunning the razor back over my head. So it would save me a lot of trouble if I actually was. So I actually wish I was bald. All right, last question of the week. Jason, I know I asked before about swapping in the T-bar rows in your novice program, but how much of a difference will it make, especially overall progress? I find myself struggling bent over rowing due to the awkwardness of the movement. At least on the T-bar row, you're in the set position. And that's the difference. That is what I want. I want you to be in that awkward position because that awkward position, when you're already fatigued because you're halfway through the workout on the barbell row, builds more stabilizers. It builds more posterior chain strength. It builds more core strength. All the things that are weak on you know, a particularly aesthetic oriented guy, because even though it's listed as a bodybuilding program, it is an overall general size program. Awkward lifts like that will shore up and help shore up those weak links that oftentimes contribute to people being injured once they become intermediate or advanced and they get stronger and they have uh, things like a weak posterior chain or a weak core or a weak lower back. The awkwardness of that barbell row helps resolve those issues and reduce injuries. That's why I have some of the lifts in there that are in there. They're to give you better overall muscle balance and stability and build up weak points that oftentimes you see in people who go on pure hypertrophy programs. So that's actually the reason. It's not that it's going to put any more size on your back than the T-bar row wheel. They're pretty well interchangeable there. So hopefully that explains a little more of why I have it in there. All right, guys, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it has been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time. But let me give you guys a bicep shot before I go. Oh, Mount Bicepius. <laughs>